I want to make that like the staple of this video. What's going on YouTube, Taylor Prentice back here with another video and in this video I'm going to be talking about some stuff that's going on in the stock market right now. So everyone's having a pretty rough time, especially me and if you're one of those people out there that's having a rough time, especially if you're new to investing, I think this will be a good video for you, maybe give you some comfort about your positions and everything. I know a lot of people are kind of getting scared and selling off and then that causes more selling off and just the fears keep growing and we are kind of going into like what seems to be a recession as inflation has been kind of uncontrollable and the housing market might be in a rough area just because of all these interest rate hikes. So uh, yeah, we are in definitely in interesting times, but with that being said, I want to kind of shed some light on what I'm doing and what other people are talking about just to give you guys a sense of what is going on in my opinions for what's going to happen over this next year or next couple of years. So my main account, I'm down like 30% over the last year, which ever since I've been in the market, I haven't really dealt with anything like this. Uh, definitely the biggest L's that I've taken. But with that being said, I haven't sold out any of my positions. So I haven't really locked in any of these losses, which I think is important. And if you look at the stock market over time, uh, things crash, like crashes do happen. It's just a part of the market, but they are good buying opportunities. I know a lot of people are kind of afraid to be buying stuff right now, but if you have extra cash, I think now is a good time to buy. I'm not saying go all in because we never really know where the bottom of the stock market is gonna go to. It could drop significantly more than where it's at today. But with that being said, the prices we've gotten to, especially on certain stocks, are pretty attractive. And I wanted to touch on Joseph Carlson's video where he like mentions a bunch of stuff that's going on within the market and just like at retail companies he mentions like Target and Walmart how they're kind of struggling and Costco even too but uh, another big thing that he talks about is like gas prices and how those are affecting companies so right now I work at Domino so I'm definitely feeling the gas prices as a delivery driver I think I paid like 460 the last time I filled up which is crazy for Indiana but it doesn't really seem like we know when gas prices are gonna finally come down so especially businesses like Amazon who ship out pretty much everything that they sell are really, really struggling right now. It may continue to report kind of weak or bad quarters for the next year or a year and a half or however long it takes us to get through these issues. So don't bank on all these companies, even great companies having amazing earnings because things are struggling and these Prices are getting passed on to the consumer in some cases, especially like food and obviously gas, like I mentioned. But if you have a safety net, like an account with $10,000 or like six months worth of your expenses, whatever your gauge is, whatever you feel comfortable with having as a safety net, I think now is a good time to be buying stocks. So stocks aren't gonna be down forever. When I first like got into the market, really uh, one of the big things that happened was we had the big drop when COVID first happened and I did not buy quickly enough, which was one of my biggest regrets. So pretty much as the market's been dropping this whole time, I've just been buying, which in hindsight may have not been the best thing, but moving forward, I feel more comfortable because I've built out my positions a lot more than I had in the past and they will recover. I feel like, like I'm buying companies that I'm really confident in, which is something that I wanted to talk about in this plain bagel video. He pretty much touches on like stuff will recover, but you just need to make sure you're in good companies. And if you don't have the stomach to handle the volatility of certain stocks, maybe you just need to be in indexes. And if you can't handle the volatility of certain indexes, maybe stocks just aren't for you. Like I said earlier, I'm down 30%. And the last thing on my mind is thinking about selling. Why would I wanna go ahead and lock in my losses, especially on companies that I think are great companies for the long term and that I'm still very bullish on. None of these uh, companies' business models have really Really been affected for the long term obviously like Corsair and some other companies may have issues with uh, shortages for parts like for the computer parts like graphics cards or uh, some of these companies may just have higher expenses due to shipping costs and just like packaging costs but as far as those business models go uh, they're still strong and they're still gonna do well in the future once we get through these tough times which I thought was another good point that the plain bagel brought up in this video is like if you have a business and a business has done well for 15, 20 years, and then you start to struggle for six months, you don't just like, oh, I'm gonna just sell the business and restart. And that's something to keep in mind if you're a new investor because the stock market has been here before you and it will be here after you. So 
you need to just keep in mind that even though things may seem really rough right now, in the long term, you'll most likely be okay as long as you're buying good companies or just buying indexes. I prefer to pick individual stocks just because I like having more control over what I'm investing in. And I kind of like to avoid diversification, which is a big... Uh, topic that people may not agree on if you listen to charlie munger and warren buffett they say diversification is kind of just protection against ignorance so if you're doing your real research and taking the time to learn about these companies and stay up to date on what they're doing it should benefit you more than if you're just buying indexes or if you're just buying a bunch of different companies because uh if you're buying indexes obviously the return rates aren't going to be super super great and if you're trying to beat those returns you have to work really hard at picking stocks and you don't want to pick too many stocks because you don't want too many things to like juggle or just pay attention to if someone has like 40 stocks there's no way that they're able to stay on top of what all those 40 companies are doing and like taking the time to listen to their conference calls and read their earnings reports and everything and i remember when i was younger i thought diversification was like everything like if you listen to kevin o'leary i think he says to have like 20 stocks and have each of them be like 5% of your portfolio or whatever. But I completely disagree with that. Obviously, he's done really well. And everyone has their own investment strategies. And everyone is at different points in their investment career and just financially. Like right now, I'm in a pretty unique position. I'm like 25 and I still live with my parents. And we have a great relationship. So I'm really lucky there. But I have really low bills in comparison to most people my age. My expenses are really low. And I plan to keep it that way, especially through this next year or so. And I'm going to be adding shares of companies I already own pretty aggressively. I do think maybe these next couple of quarters I have some companies that might not do so hot. Like I think uh, Farfetch might struggle. I'm really curious to see their newest earnings report. But obviously if consumer spending is kind of taking a hit, then Farfetch probably won't do as well. But at the same time, I feel like they're pretty adverse to normal spending habits. I feel like they're kind of in that upper echelon of brands where people who shop with them really aren't going to care too much about higher inflation or anything like that. And that's just one of the stocks that I have that's been really beaten up and kind of just devastated over time. The only stock in my portfolio today that was green was Meta or Facebook. And obviously, it's just been decimated over the past couple of months. So... Uh, yeah, not looking great for these next couple of quarters, but with that being said, I am just going to keep buying, keep adding as aggressively as I can, and see where I'm going to be in the next like three to five years because that's what it's all about. You got to have like a long term frame of thought when you're thinking about these kinds of things because in the meantime it does feel really bad especially when you're just watching your portfolio lose money every day it's like why do i want to keep buying stuff if it's just going to keep going down but you got to really just think about the long term and make sure you're investing in companies that you believe in and make sure you're doing the research to be able to make that decision like a lot of people just get on YouTube, they listen to what somebody's saying and they'll go buy that stock or they'll hear one of their friends talking about, oh, I made so and so on Tesla and uh, you should buy it. It's like, well, if you bought Tesla within like the last, I think it's like a uh, year to date is down like 40, 50%. So yeah, you could have something like that happen. Just make sure you know what you're buying. I know I try to influence people to get into stocks or just investing in general. And that's more so that they get in the habits of like saving money and trying to make money with their money. Not so much like, hey, buy this company. I'm going to be right. Uh, everyone else is wrong. Like, it's not like an ego thing with me. I really do want people to just start investing. And the pain can't last forever. So the average bear market here is 289 days, which this may not be your average bear market. Nothing about this market is average, really, especially with the rate hikes and everything going on and the possibility of a housing market crash which I'm not a homeowner. Obviously, like I said earlier in this video, I still live with my parents, but I wish I was in a financial position where I was able to buy a house after this, which obviously we'll see how the housing market plays out. To be honest, I don't see it having a huge like crash. I don't see prices dropping significantly, but at the same time, I could see like stagnation or just like a pause for housing prices over the next couple of years. I know stuff in Indiana has gotten pretty out of hand. There is a house that my brother was talking about that was sold for like 500,000 and it's in a new neighborhood and it's a pretty nice house, but 500000 for that house to me just made absolutely no sense. And I have a friend, Connor, and he said uh, 
where he lives, which is like a pretty upcoming area. It's a really nice area. He was saying that he's had multiple houses listed by him that just aren't selling at all. Whereas in the past, like six months to a year, it would have just gone right away. So yeah, uh, keeping my eyes peeled on what's happening with the market as far as housing goes, it would be cool. Like this sounds terrible for me to say, but it would be amazing for me personally if stocks like just shot up and then all of a sudden housing market crashed i don't really think that's how it's going to work out and uh, this actually brings me into this point so going back to 1981 which we haven't had this high of inflation since 1981 that's kind of like a big talking point for people right now but uh bond prices bottom first then later stocks and stocks remained under pressure for the next few months but were higher 12 months later so keep that in mind i feel like a lot of people are acting like there's no light at the end of the tunnel and even though we may not have any idea when that light is going to come or when we'll even start to see it i still think we should predict that things will get better in the end i know a lot of people are really scared right now there is that phrase scared money don't make money and i'm not telling anyone to buy because i don't know the perfect time stuff could go down way more but I do think it's just the best option to dollar cast average into positions that you believe in over the next three to five to 10 years or so. Like uh, Facebook or Meta has just gotten demolished lately, but they're one of the most successful businesses in the world and own some of the most notable brands with Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp. So I think those will continue to excel. And I do think uh, their spending habits may change, like Mark Zuckerberg said, to where they're spending less just to get through these next couple of years because they are kind of taking all the money from their family of apps and putting it into their reality labs to fund all that kind of stuff for the future, which I still believe in that full-heartedly. So I do think that's the right thing to do. But it could kind of take a hit if they're losing money on the uh, app side of things and obviously spending a ton of money on the reality lab stuff to build that out but yeah like i've said like five times in this video already i'm just gonna keep buying let me know what you guys are doing down below i know this is kind of unprecedented times especially if you're newer to the market but i just wanted to give you guys an idea that things probably will be okay it's very unlikely that things won't be and if things aren't okay, we probably have bigger issues to worry about than what's going on in the stock market. And yeah, just make sure you're doing your research. I want to make that like the staple of this video because not not all stocks are going to go back to their all-time highs. And some stocks may not even recover like at all. And some may not even make it through this. I know there are some stocks that get devastated and just never really have that recovery. But a lot of people are comparing this time to the tech bubble. I think this is a little bit different. I think the tech bubble had a lot of companies that weren't getting any revenue. And I think right now we have a lot of companies that are probably overvalued, but are making decent revenues and are actually making money. So I think as we've seen those evaluations drop, especially with companies like Facebook or Meta, where it's trading at like a 14 PE, 15 PE, um, I think it just gets kind of unreasonable for those prices for the growth that they're having and for the futures that those companies will likely have. Have. so yeah um, I'm hoping we have a turnaround obviously uh, everyone is pretty much unless you're like a perma bear or just a full bear on in the market but uh, yeah I'm not sure when that'll be so for now I'm just buying everything that I like holding positions that I like and paying attention to the fundamentals of those businesses and if any of those start to suffer then I'll probably sell out which uh, this video right here is the history of stock market crashes by Phil Town and I think this was a really good video if you're kind of unfamiliar with the crashes that have happened in the past and what to avoid and what we should have learned from those crashes I thought this was a really good video so you guys should definitely go check it out if you've liked this video and if you have liked this video if you could hit that like and subscribe for me I would really appreciate it and yeah stay tuned to the channel for new videos about stocks or just personal finance in general and if you guys need to set up a brokerage now is a good time if you don't have one or if you just want another one to kind of accumulate free stuff uh, i have a robin hood link down below so you can click that start there get a free stock and i have a coinbase link too so if you're interested in crypto uh, i would recommend going and clicking that coinbase link people act like crypto was going to be like a big hedge against the stock market but as it seems they're kind of performing similar to the stock market assets so i'm not sure that it's the greatest hedge but i do think uh bitcoin and ethereum still were continuing to do well over however long i'm alive so i'm gonna keep buying those every once in a while especially when we get those big dips but i am going way heavier into stocks just because i feel like the information and history we have 
is a lot more definite. Um, we don't really know what's going to happen with crypto. We have no time in our history where the crypto market has been what it is and we've had a recession. So it'll be interesting to see how it handles it. And there'll probably be a bunch of money made, uh, whether it be in crypto or stocks over the next coming years. So I'm hoping I'm going to be on the right side of that. I know a lot of people are selling out of their positions at all time lows or like 52 week lows. So don't be that guy unless that company you think is just going to keep continuing to go down. But anyways, thank you so much for watching if you made it to this point and we will see you next time. Have a good one.